Hi everybody, welcome to another Spectrum Economics video. Today we're going to be looking at cost-benefit analysis again, and the focus is going to be on sensitivity analysis. So I did a presentation where I talk about sensitivity analysis and some of the stuff that goes into that. Today I'm going to be focusing on a model that I created. I call this model POST. And this model actually is a post is a project output sensitivity tester. So you do your sensitivity analysis in your initial model that you got. So you run a number of different scenarios. And you take the results of those tests and you put it within this model. And this model actually comes out with a distribution of results, giving you maximum, minimum, giving you your expected value, your P10s, P90s, and P50 values. So and it's not just around cost, it's around your benefit cost ratio and also around your net present value. So, okay, let's just take a look at this model now. So here we are, this is post. So it's a fairly simple model. As you can see, you only got um, fairly uh, simple outputs here. Sorry, a few pages to enter your data in. So you've got instructions, cost estimate, and full sensitivity tests. So before you use any model, in fact when you're creating a model, it's always important to have instructions in there. And that's not just for other users, but it's also for yourself as well as a reminder of how you need to enter the data. Because if you work with different models, you need something for a long time, you may forget certain things. So that's why it's important to have these instructions. So I'm just going to quickly run through those. So here we are. I'm not going to talk too much about that because this is the point of this video just to demonstrate how it operates. But we've got in here like the stuff you need to do beforehand, the things you need to run within your own models required as inputs into this model, how you use your, um, your cost estimate model, and how you use the main model, which is a, to calculate your net present value and benefit cost ratio. And also talks briefly about how Monte Carlo simulations actually run within this model. It's nowhere near as sophisticated as something like at risk, but this model is designed especially for um, projects and project outputs. So it's a little bit more focused. So let's go to our cost estimate first. So what do we need for that? As you can see, I've entered some numbers in here. So we've got your base estimate of uh, 40 million. And I've also got your contingencies as well. I haven't put the names of contingencies in there, but I just listed them from 1 to 10, as well as assigned probabilities to those contingencies too, which can be used to calculate your costs. What we've got down here is a maximum probability graphed. So this is for the graph, purpose of viewing the results in a graph. If you go all the way out to 100%, you'll see the graph is stretched right out and you, you don't really get to see what you want to see. And, and that is focusing on the main areas where your results are. Like, for example, you may have most of your results within, I don't know, one or two million. You may have a couple of outliers that stretches the graph out. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to see. So what you do next is you calculate some background calculations and if we move over here to the right you can actually see your cumulative distribution see that nice S shape here we go and over here you can see you've got also you've got somewhat similar to a normal distribution not quite but it's and it's fairly symmetrical in this case not normally going to see that you tend to see some sort of skewing either way but as you can see it, it follows with that central tendency as well so that is something you would expect to see. And here we've got some more results, goes into a little bit more detail. So this gives us, uh, so we've got our base estimate in there, as well as your expected value, and also your P10, P50, and P90 values. You can see the P50 and the P90 values, the P50 values are very somewhat similar because it's not skewed either way. We'll see on the other sheet where the results are a little bit more skewed. You can actually see where your P50 is actually a little bit lower than you expected. Here, actually a tiny bit lower here as well, but it's more noticeable on our other sheet. We've also got your differences between your P10 and your P50, just for a little bit more information, as well as your standard deviation. Okay, so let's go and have a look at our full sensitivity test now. Here we go. So what we've got here is your analysis that you would have run, and you would actually paste those results straight in here. So what we've got is you've got your capital costs, and you can actually, if I, I can actually delete this value here, and let's say, just leave that blank if you don't have a, an estimate. So if you need a rapid estimate, you use the cost estimator function within this tool itself. So you go and click this button here, and it will give you your expected value from the previous sheet. Here we go. So just enter straight in. If you don't need that, you've already got another estimate that's a bit more detailed, you can enter that straight in as well. 
So what's next once you've pasted your results out of your model is to identify whether they're actual costs or benefits. So you've got your capital costs and your operating costs. You could have operating cost savings, which you could treat as a benefit potentially. But anyway, we'll put those as costs for this example. And then we've got benefits from one to eight. You can actually have an additional two more benefits if need be. So it allows for quite a variety of benefits. Also have to bear in mind if certain benefits are interrelated, you may want to lump them onto one, the one benefit for the sake of um, the analysis later on that I show you. But anyway, we've got it down here as eight benefits and assuming that they're all fairly independent of each other. And you've also got your net present value and your benefit cost ratio. The model actually recalculates that, but that should be the same values you're getting out of your model anyway. So how many key drivers now? This key drivers are important when you come to sensitivity testing because they affect the parameters that you actually change when you run your analysis. So we've got a maximum of six. You have a minimum of two. I do recommend having more. Six is about as far as I got with this model. It's kept it fairly simple. You may have more, or you may actually want to combine some of your key drivers together. So give us our top six here. So you've got things like gross state product. We've got population growth, frequency of flood events. So this I think this would be a road project potentially, improved technology, mode shift between different modes, whether it's between you know, cars or buses and stuff like that. And what we've got over here is a central case. So what has been used in your analysis? Have you used the low, the high, or the medium? And this is what a lot of this is focused off. We've got three scenarios for each of the key drivers. And then you've got the results of those different scenarios you enter below. So for these key drivers, we've assumed that there is the medium case. The central case is the medium values. All right, next thing you need to do is enter your probability. So I've kept it fairly simple. You can enter different probabilities for different, um, for different drivers or different assumptions. So I've kept it here as uh, 0.2 for low and 0.2 for high, and the medium is calculated as the difference. That gives us a 0.6, just for the sake of argument to keep it simple. What's next is you need to enter your results out of your model. So before you go into this model, you have to make sure that you've actually run the various sensitivities within your own model itself, because this model can't actually incorporate your model itself. So you need to run the model and generate these results, and then you do a copy and you do a paste. When you do a copy and paste, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but it's important that you actually just paste the values. So don't bring the formulas, don't bring the format or anything, because you want to use the formatting of this model. So it's just simple paste values, and then the values you put in here will adopt the formatting of this model. So as you scroll over, so we got, here we go, gross state product, population growth, frequency of floods, improved technology, low accident, and mode shift. And then we've got the high and the low values for all of those. So that's quite a bit of sensitivity testing required beforehand, but we use those results to actually calculate our distributions. Let me see, so what have we got down here? Okay, we've got a few more options. So the relationship between the benefits and the costs, you can either have a percentage benefit. So for example, you run a sensitivity test where your benefits got by 20%. You run another one where they got by, let's say, 10%. So you combine those as a percentage increase. So you'd have a 20% increase, and on top of that, you'd have a 10% increase, and on top of that, you'd maybe the next one's a 15% increase. There's also the option to have what we've got down here is use actuals. So that would be, for example, if your benefits increased by, let's say, 5 million for one sensitivity test. Maybe they went down by 8 million for another one. Maybe they went up by 12 million for another one. Then you add those together, and that would be your net difference. So that's how your results would be calculated. I've kept it as percentage, so it stops it from blowing out too much, whereas you have actuals, you could get some strange results that I've experienced anyway when running this. All right, next is just purely for the graph. As I mentioned before, we had the upper limit of 98%. So I've got a lower limit down here, minimum to be graphed. So what you're seeing in the graph is between 2% and 98%. That, again, that's stopping the graph from just stretching out, just so you've got something that's valid and something that's relevant. Okay, so once we've done that, you need to calculate your cost, your benefits, net present value, and benefit cost ratio individually. Let's have a run here. You go, that's one lot calculated. And go back, calculate your benefits. Calculated, calculate your MPV. This is just feeding off of your probabilities. This is a much quicker way of calculating it than actually running your Monte Carlo simulation, which I'm going to show you later. Now, the Monte Carlo simulation may be more useful if you have less probabilities to calculate, as I'll show you a little bit later on. All right, so 
let's we'll have a quick look at the results. First of all, we're going to have to run our Monte Carlo analysis. So this does take a little bit of time. All right, here we go. So let's calculate our MPV using Monte Carlo analysis. Just click on this. All right, so I fast forwarded a little bit. I don't want to bore you guys while they're running the iterations. It's 2,000 iterations. If you've got a fast computer, it shouldn't take too long. My computer here is not particularly fast. Unfortunately, it's running on Windows 10, and it's not a com very sophisticated computer. The computer was probably better off on Windows 8. It was one of those automatic updates. So now I'm going to um, quickly uh, run through the calculations. So this is, we already calculated the net present values in Monte Carlo analysis. I calculated the BCR as well, another run through the Monte Carlo analysis simulation. It is not the same simulation because it's done a little bit differently because there's a division between benefits and costs and it's run slightly differently than using the MPV, so I have to run it twice. But the results will be consistent because we've got 2,000 iterations and we're only looking at six key drivers, that's the maximum. So we're going to get something fairly accurate. But let's just have a look at the results now. Let's make a comparison. So let's look at our central case. That will be the same in both scenarios. Nothing much has been done there. Expected value using um, Monte Carlo compared to using our calculation with probabilities. It's more or less the same. Benefit cost ratio is 0.87. And net present value is negative about 5.6, never been about 5.7 using Monte Carlo. And the benefit cost ratio is again the same for your P90, P50, and P10, it's all the same. And we're only looking about about a million difference in results. Now the P10 is a little bit different, almost out by about 3 million, but again, they're more or less within the same ballpark that we got here. And then we've got our standard deviation, all of that being calculated using our probabilities. We can break down the results a little bit further in terms of costs and benefits. And the Monte Carlo analysis didn't quite pick up that level of detail, but we calculated it again using the probabilities directly, whereas Monte Carlo analysis actually runs simulations, so it's actually calculating the results as you go through, and because the probabilities would skew towards a particular outcome, you would actually get an accurate distribution, which is, is actually good for, if you have enough simulations, I think, sorry, we have iterations, which we got is about 2,000. So as you can see here, We've got our costs are higher than our benefits in most cases, except for P10. We've got our standard deviation for both benefits and costs. Down here, we have our distribution using net, our net present value accumulated distribution. Again, we see we've got that nice S shape that you should get. And you've got that for the benefit cost ratio as well. And if we go down a little bit further, here we are. So we've got the uh, frequency distribution. So you can see the results here are actually skewed a little bit here. As you can see, the higher there's, um, you're going to have a there's certain outliers, should I put it, in terms of calculate, and we try to cut that down by putting a cap on the graph to give us a more relevant graph. But you can see the results are skewed because there potentially there are MPVs that could run very very high, depending on the combination of drivers that come through. Whereas you're not going to get anything that is too low, so that gives us that distribution. And if we look up here you'll notice with the P50, I should have mentioned just now, your P50 is actually lower than your um, expected value. So expected value is expected to fall somewhere between your P50 and your P90. A lot closer to your P50 generally than the P90, as you can see here. But uh, between that, actually probably between your P50 and maybe P70 if we calculated one. So if you go down to our Monte Carlo simulation, we've got very similar graphs. Again, this should look almost identical. So the ones I showed you just now, we use the probabilities. And also we got down here the frequency. The Monte Carlo simulation gives us a much smoother distribution, I think, than what we got with our calculations, because we're just doing the one-off calculations using the probabilities, whereas you've got 2,000 iterations of results that have given us. And as you can see here, with the results here, the frequency they've got here. So we've got a, about 400 over that falls within this range here for net present value, so just below zero and that's roughly where we P50 is I believe if we go up where's our P50 about 9 million, ah so it's a bit different but okay but anyway um, that pretty much takes us to the end of this um, presentation I'll take you back to the cover screen here we go so um, yeah this is the, um, the model so it's like I say you've got to do a lot of the work beforehand using your own tools and models produce those results of your sensitivities 
and then you can get those outputs, do a simple paste, paste without formatting into here, and then you can run a number of different things. You could do Monte Carlo simulations, you can calculate based on probabilities, and therefore you'll get your distribution of results. And this is very, very useful when you're comparing projects that have very similar net present values and benefit cost ratios, but you want to distinguish between them and risk can come into play. Like you may have certain key drivers that the project is very, very sensitive to. So you may get a benefit cost ratio of let's say 1.5, but if one of the drivers doesn't come through, let's say population growth, it's expected very high population growth. If that doesn't happen, maybe your benefit cost ratio goes all the way down to 0.2 or 0.3. But you may have a, another project that's not so dependent on that driver. So it may get a benefit cost ratio again of 1.5, but if you don't get that population growth, then maybe your benefit cost ratio only drops down to about 0.2 or 0.3 or something like that. And that would normally be with projects that have got most of their benefits early on, so it doesn't get hit by you because of our population growth and stuff like that influences a lot of your future benefits. So it's also worth bearing in mind. But anyway, um, I think this uh, model can be used to provide more information around your results of your cost-benefit analysis and also around what drives your analysis and also the potential risks involved. So, yep, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, remember to hit the like button. If you want to see videos similar to this, more models and stuff like that, I've got a number, I've got a game called Live Choices, you can hit the subscribe button. I've also got another number of videos regarding basic economic concepts and also game theory as well as I've got something started up called now vegan economics so there's a whole load of other videos that are definitely worth watching and also more stuff on cost benefit analysis and even social impact evaluation as well but thank you for watching today's video and uh, hopefully I'll be seeing more of you